what is up everybody? It's a me, uh, Yemi the Ferret here with another episode of Yemi Cast, a video game p -p podcast on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Apple p -p Podcasts. Thank you so much for coming to this episode of Yemi Cast, which is uh, I'm recording this on the 3rd of December. 2019 we're getting so close to the end of the year and so close to that game of the year official game of the year announcement from me uh remember that will be on the 15th of december so make sure you stop on by for that if you want to put in your game of the year prediction what my game of the year is going to be predict it uh, you can hop on over to my discord and leave a message in the Game of the Year predictions uh, place. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Room? I don't know. You can leave it there and you'll be locked in. And if you guess it correctly, you can win that game. And if you guess it correctly and uh, someone else guessed it before you, you can win a sticker pack from me. Official Yummy Me The Ferret stickers. For free. So, if you want to, make sure you check that out if you are interested. Also, if you're here for the premiere of this episode at 4 o'clock on Wednesday, December 4th, thank you so, so very much. I appreciate you. If you're listening to the podcast any other day, any other platform, I appreciate you as well. Don't worry about it. Uh, stream. Stream this week, this weekend. Uh, we might be doing one on Friday. It's been requested by a few people to stream a cooking simulator again. Uh, of course, I work, so it'll probably be a little bit later than last time, but if I do, I'll let you all know on the Discord and on Twitter. And then officially on Saturday, we're doing the more Arkham Origins. I'm going to try and get through the game as much as I can, and then I'll do a bunch of the Enigma stuff on my own time during the week, just so we can kind of see all the stuff that happens with the Enigma stuff, which isn't that much. <laughs> let me tell you that much. But it's kind of cool. And I don't feel like wasting hours of your day searching for those encrypted boxes and taking out those sensors <laughs> and you need all the gadgets to do all of them so that's why i want to do it after we do all of that anything else you me uh browns have been disappointing cleveland browns uh yeah we beat the dolphins great <laughs> they almost stayed to come back but hey great and a team that we should have beat this last week uh weekend uh took us to town and who knows if we'll be able to beat the Bengals. They won their first game. Woo! And uh, they're they're on a hot streak. One win out of 12 games. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's go ahead and jump right into the news. Because we got a good amount of things to discover today. And the number one story trending right now is that the Resident Evil 3, or Biohazard 3, if you're in Japan. Oops. Uh... If you're, or Biohazard 3, if you're in Japan. It took a second there. It took a second, and I was kind of scared for a second. <laughs> Resident Evil 3 Remake is actually uh, going to be coming around next year in 2020. It's pretty much been confirmed by now. There's been a lot of talk about Resident Evil 3 and if it's going to get a remake ever since the Resident Evil 2 remake came out. If you don't recall, there is there was a post on Twitter by the Resident Evil official Twitter showing a hole in the wall and asking, wow, what made that hole? And everyone speculated that, yep, it's got to be Nemesis from Resident Evil 3 because he bursts through tons of doors. Now, who knows if they were just teasing Mr. X or whatever, but... Uh, it seemed like the people that they were teasing the nemesis. Now, with Project Resistance officially being revealed and having a similar graphical style to Resident Evil 2, I'm wondering if if Project Resistance is actually going to be like a mode that's attached to Resident Evil 3 Remake or if they're just going to be two separate entities. Who knows? Hey, big thanks to Night Celestial for bringing this article to my attention about Resident Evil 3. Now, there's been a lot of speculation, like I said, you know? Resident Evil 3 has had a long, long rumor that the remake is going to happen. It's it's probably predating Resident Evil 2's remake, to be honest with you. Many, many people have been hoping for a remake of this game. It's a PS1 classic, uh, and it used to have tank controls and all that kind of stuff, so people are saying that this game is definitely going to be updated to be more of, like, Resident Evil 2, or the later Resident Evils, uh, except for, like, 7. <laughs> 
<laughs> Which I liked. You guys know this. You guys know I loved Resident Evil 2 this year. Uh, it's actually winning a lot of Game of the Year awards from a lot of different places. Uh, it's uh, Resident Evil 2 is being voted one of the best games this year. And, I, I mean, I, I see where people are coming from. I get it. It's a completely new experience from the original one. Me, personally, I don't know if I can give it Game of the Year, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, my list has been finalized, so... You know, I'm not like changing my game of the year or anything like that. It has been finalized, so if you if you want to check, you know, listen to my game of the year, top ten game of the years, I'll probably talk about some other games as well that I played. And then I also want to do podcast episodes for the best games of the decade and probably the you know, I'll 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 rank all the games that I've completed this year on stream or just in general as well, eventually. So look out for those things. Sorry guys, I, I put some promotion in there for um promotion ad i put some other stuff in there that while i was talking about resident evil 3 but anyways <laughs> resident evil 3 all right so according to online speculation the game has been in development for some time in quotation marks and uh resident evil 3 remake pictures have sprung up on different websites and stores so there's one that's like kind of like the resident evil 2 one you see i believe that's jill valentine and some guy with long hair, and then Nemesis is looking over them with the city in the background and Resident Evil 3 in there. It's obviously Raccoon City behind them. And then another one has surfaced that says Biohazard RE3 Z version. So who knows what Z version is going to be, but it just shows the Nemesis with all his crap on him, and he's looking pretty fierce. He's He's got a perpetual forever smile, just like the Joker. Uh, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> So, yeah, we'll we'll see uh, where this leads in the future. Obviously, I'm pretty excited to pl- re- you know to play these games for the first time in this format. Because, you know what, to be honest with you guys, if I went back and played Resident Evil 2, the regular version on PlayStation 1, before Resident Evil 2, the remake, I don't know if I would be able to get through Resident Evil 2 nowadays. I, I, I couldn't even get through like those Resident Evil 0 and, and Resident Evil 1 bundle games. Back in the back when those came out to the PlayStation, they didn't change anything about them other than the slight graphical quality and stuff like that. And I just I, I'm not a fan of those kind of controls. You know, I'm we've moved away from that stuff. I st- look, just to be honest with you guys. I started my gaming career with the N64, Nintendo 64, and the PC. Okay, that's where I started my gaming career with the PlayStation 2, the N64, and the PC. Uh, and those games already had 3D movement, 3D motion, stuff like that. I went back and played games. On, like, the PlayStation 1 and stuff like that. I have my PlayStation 1 here. There's games that I went back and played. But games like this, like Resident Evil, you know, I I, I just, I can't go back and play them. So these new and improved remakes really help people like me who can't get into that kind of stuff because we didn't grow up in that era. But people who did grow up in that era can see their games, their favorite games from those days, reimagined, re-horrified, better controls, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I got through Grand, you know, Grim Fandango with tank controls. I, I think I could go through Resident Evil 2 with, with tank controls, but do I want to? No, I did Grim Fandango with tank controls for a platinum trophy, a very nice platinum trophy, but Resident Evil 3, 2, 1, 0, lift off, <laughs> uh, can't do it, won't do it, but it'd be awesome to see Resident Evil 3 get remade, and we'll see if they continue on with this trend to the other games. I doubt it though because Resident Evil 4 and 5 and 6 they are you know they are they are very, they've already been re-released on the newest consoles with physical editions and digital editions on Switch as well with gyro I don't think they added gyro controls actually or did they I think they did I think I reported on it Yummy you stupid noob you should know this you do episodes every week with multiple news in them and how can you forget what you did a few weeks ago how how can you do that yummy you 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 <laughs> stupid noob anyways Resident Evil 3 remake is pretty much confirmed by now so if you want to you you can uh wait around for the official reveal which will probably be probably around the game awards time um but yeah it, the this these images that you're seeing on the screen if you're watching the video version appeared on the playstation store's database complete with cover art assets showcasing jill of valentine carlos oliviera and the nemesis there you go and uh jill valentine's kind of stirring up a little controversy because she has a completely new face 
I'm not sure if they did that in the original games or whatever, but she has a new face in this game. She looks older, I guess you would, or, I don't know. I don't know if you can say older, but she does look a lot different, but I think they just kind of aged her with one of those apps, <laughs> you know, to see what she would look like older. Because I'm pretty sure in Resident Evil 2, Jill Val, let's see what Jill, Jill Val in Tyne Age Resident Evil 2. Uh, in Resident Evil 2, she is alive. <laughs> she is 5 foot 5 inches. <laughs> Come, this isn't what I want. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. You know what? Fuck it. I'm cutting, I'm cutting this out. <laughs> Let's move on. I've been embarrassed for the last time. Alright, so The Legend of Zelda and a lot more are coming to Super Mario Maker 2 version 2, which is coming later this week. When was this posted? Yesterday. Okay, so yeah, later this week. Late. Wow, that's that's pretty that's pretty close, guys. There's a bunch of new stuff coming with version 2.0, and it's bringing the Master Sword and a bunch of new enemies and some new items as well. Uh, new course parts and all that stuff, and some new me costume and st what they say stickers or something like that. So here is the direct info from the press release. After downloading version 2.0.0 update, the new Master Sword item will be available to use exclusively in the 8-bit Super Mario Bros. style. When this new course part is picked up, Mario will transform into Link, equipped with a new set of moves like attacking with a sword, shooting arrows, and dropping bombs. He can also do like a drop attack, and uh, he can do he can like shield himself with a shield. So it really transforms the game into something a lot different. In the recently released Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for Nintendo Switch, Link encounters familiar characters from Super Mario games like Piranha Plants and Goombas. But this time, Link is joining in a Super Mario game in Super Mario Maker 2. Transforming into Link using the Master Sword opens up a whole new world of design possibilities for creators. Using his arrows, Link can shoot far-off switches that Mario would normally not be able to hit. His new down thrust move with the sword will defeat usually protected enemies like spike covered spinies, and with bombs, some walls that would normally be impassable by Mario and friends can easily be blown up. In addition to Link, the update also adds more coarse parts and enemies, as well as a new ninja speedrun mode, perfect for players looking for a challenge. Dash block available in on only in only available in Super Mario 3D World style. The dash block courses give. Uh, they give Mario a major speed boost when stepped on, and when he jumps, he actually gets extended jump as well. The Frozen Coin. These coins are surrounded by a block of ice and can only be released by, if, if melted by fireballs or other fire elements, including a certain angry sun. P-Block. When a P-switch is hit in the course, invisible P-blocks temporarily turn into hard platforms or vice versa. Spike. This classic enemy coughs up massive spike balls and launches them at Mario. If you use the snow environment, Spike will toss snowballs instead. And the last uh, new enemy is Pokey, which is an iconic cactus from multiple Super Mario games, including Super Mario 64. Super Mario Maker 2, for the first time he is appearing, players can even edit the height of each Pokey. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Here's the new speedrun mode, the Ninji speedrun mode. Players can take on a timed challenge course created by Nintendo exclusively for the mode. Other players, Ninja Ghosts, will run along players as they complete as they compete against rivals from around the world. The Ninja Ghosts that appear that appear are selected from player data at a similar performance level, so players can gradually improve their performance by running the course alongside other players' Ninja Ghosts. Uh, players can also collect stamps by clearing courses and redeem them in game to get special Mi costumes. Each Ninja speedrun event will run for about one week, with new courses distributed periodically. During the event, players will be ranked by their play time in the course. Players can still run the uh, the course alongside Ninja Ghosts and collect stamps even after the event period has ended. So the Ninja mode is pretty much uh, Super Mario Battle Royale. <laughs> um, if you don't recall that fiasco, uh, they got taken down by Nintendo for using their assets and stuff like that. Uh, it's a little bit different because you're not actually like competing against real life people. They're they're ghosts pretty much. Like if you're doing a racing game, sometimes you'll see your own ghosts. Or like in that game Hot Lava, you'll see the the ghost of your best time w of completing the course run run alongside you, so you can kind of keep up with them or you know maybe see possible new ways to go. So that's cool. That is cool, especially for the ninja thing. And I think I can see a lot of people playing that uh, instead of going on online and playing against people with the crappy online service. 
I can see Chronoside streaming this game and doing a ninji only stream and trying to beat the best times and getting all the stickers unlocked. I think people would really enjoy that. Uh, me personally, I, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm still a fan of Mario Maker. You know, I'm just not into it as much as everyone else because I'm just not really good at it, <laughs> to be honest with you guys. I'm just, I just, I can't really do anything super fantastic because my skill level is very, very low in these games. I'm trying, though. I'm trying, and hopefully by the time that this version 2.0.0 comes out, I'll be able to do a few more things that I probably couldn't have. Uh, but I do need to put the game back in my Switch in order to improve, so there you go. <laughs> but yeah, great update for the game. It definitely adds a lot more than people were expecting it to add. Uh, people are still interested to see if there's going to be a new game style added in the future, and I think this Link, the Link thing... Or the Legend of Zelda thing, the Master Sword thing, definitely adds like a new a new way to play the game, uh, and maybe we'll see something similar in the near future with something else. All right, so the Call of Duty Modern Warfare Season One is available now on the PlayStation Four. Four, <laughs> PlayStation Four. What? You can download Patch One Point Ten now. It's about a sixteen gigabyte patch so it's going to be downloading for a little while there but yeah season one has begun it's, it's going to add a lot of new guns some new maps uh maybe a new game mode or two some new spec ops stuff uh and uh, here's all the details season one is bringing a bunch of new free content and it's available right now there'll be three new classic maps added along its season one path with crash being available to play now Vac vacant and shipment are also on the list, along with terminal, which I don't see in this article even stating. So, fuck this. Anyways, uh, also there's gonna be two new gunfight maps uh, and another battlefield to play on Ground War. There's also gonna be two new weapons which can be unlocked. One looks like the Tar or the Scar, not the Scar, the Tar, whatever. And then there's one that looks like uh, one of the machine guns. I think it's the MG34 from Modern Warfare 3. They're named something different, of course. So, you know, everyone who hasn't played Modern Warfare 3 are like, What are you talking? I don't even know what those guns are, you stupid noob. Uh, there's also going to be two more Spec Ops experiences, which are actually available to play after you download the patch. One's uh, Reinforced Mode. Oh. Also, Reinforced Mode is also available to play today, which is a new game mode. Yeah, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer to play Vacant and Shipment, and Infinity Ward said they're going to be rolling out more content in the coming weeks before Season 1 finishes, which that'll be the 28th of January 2020. The Battle Pass, which will allow you to get everything uh, right away, is going to be about $10. It's about 1,000 COD points, uh, so you can actually purchase everything, kind of like you could in Battlefield or Black Ops 4, but this is a little bit different because... It's a lot less money than Black Ops 4. Um, this this game, you can literally unlock everything in the season with 1,000 points, whereas that one, you'd have to spend upwards of like $100 to get everything, which well, is not too good. Also, there's a new character to unlock. She's a sweet, sexy emo girl, uh, so you can unlock her as well. And I think you only unlock her through purchasing the Battle Pass, which uh, is kind of shitty if you ask me. Some more weapon skins. Just like in Fortnite and Black Ops 4, you earn stuff by getting XP in games, playing games, you unlock stuff, uh, which includes the weapons, skins, and everything else in between. So there you go. Get on Modern Warfare today and scream your eyes out as you get killed by the Olympia from 50 miles away. Today! For the low, low price of fuck you! All right, Persona 5 Royal. The Western release date is a, has been officially revealed, and uh, there you go. It's going to be March 2020. It's going to be the 31st of March 2020. So I, I, I believe it's a little bit later than people were expecting, but hey, there you go. Also, a leak on Amazon Canada, which has a product page complete with the release date. Uh, someone already has pulled the trigger early on purchasing it, and they showed off the Phantom Thieves Edition, which can be viewed. I think they took it down from Amazon, actually, already. So, Persona 5 Royale, uh, the Phantom Thieves Edition, is going to come with a steelbook case for the game. It's going to come with the original soundtrack and art book, and the Joker mask. Not the <laughs> Joker, but the Persona 5 Joker. Uh, so there you go. It's also going to come with a dynamic PS4 theme as well. There you go. Not too bad. 
Um, so yeah, Persona 5 is actually joining Final Fantasy 8 and Nio 2, which are going to come out on, in March 2020 as well. So make sure you look f- look for Persona 5 Royale coming in 2020. March 2020. And look out for that uh, collector's edition if you're interested in that. Okie dokie, December 2019, PlayStation Plus games are now available to download on the PlayStation 4. What are they, Yemi? Titanfall 2 and Monster Energy Supercross. I'll wait. Oh, no applause? Okay. Uh, (laughs) So yeah, Titanfall 2 and Monster Energy Supercross are the 2019 December games. Um... Both games, uh, well, actually, Motocross, the Motocross Supercross game, I haven't really, I, I never played. I didn't even know that the, it was a game. Titanfall 2, on the other hand, won Game of the Year for me, uh, which I think that released two years ago now. Uh, it was a fantastic single-player experience along with a fantastic multiplayer. It still has a pretty solid multiplayer community, and they've added a good amount of things in, including new Titans, new guns, and new modes, and new co-op modes as well. So that's a, that's a st- I mean... It still sells for about 20 bucks. I think on sale I got it for 5 digitally, not digitally, uh physically back in the day when I repurchased it. Um and then the Monster Energy Supercross game has mediocre reviews. Um it doesn't come with free Monster Energy, so you know, <laughs> who even needs that shit? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I've, I've never played Motocross or Supercross. The only the only game that I've played like that is the one that was bundled in the Xbox 360 when it originally came out. It was bundled with Lego Batman and MTX ATV or something like that. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, I got that version. Not the Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts slash Viva Pinata version. I got the other version because cause I'm a gamer. I, I didn't know any... I didn't even know what I was getting. My parents bought it for me, so... Fuck you, haters. So there you go. That's the December games. Are you happy with them? Let me know below. If you're happy with them, let me know why. If you're not happy with them, I think I understand why. It's really not a good deal. But you know what? You, you can't win them all, guys. You can't have God of War every month. <laughs> you gotta have some slower months in there. I mean, look back to the to when they were gonna do PES 2018 for free, and they changed that out for you know Detroit Become Human. That was great. Everyone loved that. And with that comes a, a, a month that's a little bit slower. And I think this is fine. It's It's... Like I said before, we're getting to the end of the PlayStation 4's lifespan, in, and the PlayStation Plus games are definitely going to decrease in quality a little bit as we go on. I'm sure next month there's going to be something huge because it's the 1st of January. I'm sure there's going to be like a new game or something like that available for free on the PlayStation Plus. Don't quote me on that because I'm probably wrong, and it's not like the old days where they had a bunch of indie games along with it, but it'd be nice to see something a little bit newer pop up on the free games list. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of older games, so we'll see if next month is a little bit better. But I'm okay with this month. You know, it's not for me personally. I'll definitely add Motocross, Monster Energy, whatever, to my library. But I'm probably not going to download it. I have enough to play. I haven't even played Darksiders 3 yet. I've been waiting on that. That was a good month. Anyways, let's move on. So, PlayStation is now the world's best-selling home console brand, and they have a Guinness World Record to prove it. If you don't recall from last week, Hideo Kojima got a few Guinness World Records for being uh, the most popular social media uh, video game producer or whatever. And now PlayStation came out on Twitter and said, At PlayStation, we're thrilled to be certified as the best-selling home video game console brand ever, with over 450 million units sold across the original PlayStation, PS2, PS3, and PS4 as of November 7th, according to uh, Guinness World Records. And it's all thanks to you with a blue heart. That didn't factor in any of the portable experiences. Uh, So that number could be a lot more. But um, I think Nintendo has that market cornered. And I think they have a separate one for that. So Nintendo fanboys everywhere cry out in agony as they see that Sony has won this. Um, But I think Nintendo could overtake this number with the Switch and stuff like that. Nintendo had had a flop of a console with the Wii U and... A lot of people don't like the didn't like the GameCube. I personally loved it, um, but anyways, <laughs> and the Wii U of course didn't sell as well as they were expecting. Um, but with the Switch and the Wii, I mean, they definitely have some numbers up there. So I'm guessing that Nintendo is gonna probably surpass this within the year. But who knows? With the PS5 coming around, Sony may just keep this Guinness World Record for a good while. 
All right, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Haven't talked about this in a while, and this is the game that released in 2017, not the OG. It's celebrating the rise of Skywalker with some new content, new free in-game content. Star Wars Battlefront 2 launched in late 2017 with lots of fucking regret and, and fucking criticism, which was well-deserved. And now they've redone the game pretty much. I have been waiting to go back to it. You know, a lot of people have been like, Yummy, yeah, you should go play that game. Keji Rain was telling me to do it. Maz was telling me to do it. I'm like, I don't know, guys. Uh, I'm not giving No Man's Sky a second chance. Why should I give Battlefront 2 a second chance? They've added a lot of stuff, though, guys. I haven't reported on all of it. I, I, well, I will say I've, I've been emitting some Battlefront 2 news. But today's the day for you Battlefront 2 fans. Because... There's new there's new free content coming with the that was um, inspired by the Rise of Skywalker blockbuster film. So it's going to be released on the 5th of December. The Star Wars Battlefront 2 Celebration Edition bundles together every single play, piece of purchasable, customizable content released for the game and adds new items taken for the ninth entry in the saga. You'll be able to get your hands on the legendary appearances for Rey, Finn, and Kylo Ren when the movie hits theaters on December 20th as well as a new map and characters to play as as well. This also could mean that stormtroopers equipped with jetpacks, as seen as the in the recent TV ad, could be, could be in the game as well, just like the shock troopers from the OG Battlefield front game. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we'll see if this really impacts the game at all. It seems like it's a little bit less of an entry. I mean, there's a new map, of course, coming, but the there's no real new heroes coming, because we already have Kylo Ren and Finn and, and Rey, um, I was hoping to see maybe someone else. Maybe C-3PO? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. you stink! <laughs> uh, if you want to hear my thoughts on the new teaser trailer, there's a FUBAR Ferret episode coming soon that I talk about the Mandalorian and the new teaser for Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. So when that comes out, check it out if you want to know my, my thoughts on those. Um, let's move on. All right, so the untitled Goose Game PS4 release could be closer than we thought, with the trophy list appearing online. Uh, so, untitled Goose Game is getting a lot of nods from people, being one of the best indie games of the year, and also potentially being a game of the year for a lot of people. Untitled Goose Game was 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 thought to be getting a release on the PlayStation in 2020 after the project head of House House talked to ABC News, but but. As we see from the tr a trophy list appearing online, that could be coming sooner rather than later. Um, could this game be coming to the PS4 be before Christmas? It seems maybe likely. So on the website exophase.com, a trophy list has appeared showing the percentages, the what rarity the trophies are, and all the trophies in the game. Uh, it also shows that there is going to be a platinum trophy with the game, Trophy hunters everywhere rejoice. There's 25 trophies in total with 1,230 points up for grabs. Um, so most of the trophies consist of just doing the list that you need to do. Uh, there's also some special things that you need to do as well, like opening an umbrella inside the TV shop and collecting five flowers and, and getting thrown over the fence. <laughs> and there's also some timed challenges as well, doing the do to-do list before the bell before the church bell rings so who knows how long that's actually going to be but they are timed and i'm sure once people figure out how long the time is they'll know, you know they'll tell people hey you got to do all this shit before 2 minutes is up and that would be pretty crazy so looks like it's going to be a little bit challenging maybe um, but it's also a very very good game so make sure if it does come out to the PlayStation soon to pick that up all right so uh Ikumi Nakamura is seemingly going to join Sony with a few tweets and a few things happening on Twitter. The ex-Ghostwire Tokyo director seems to be hitting it off with Sony publish the Sony publishers. So she's been uh, kind of stuck in limbo going around to different development studios, and there hasn't been a real case for where she's going to go next. Um, she was the star of E3, pretty much, uh, being one of the most popular people to jump on stage with fan art galore, after she jumped on stage and was so quirky and, and oh, she's so Japanese. 
Uh, so anyways, <laughs> people on Twitter uncovered two interesting facts recently. The newly appointed head of PlayStation Worldwide Studios, Herman Hurst, recently followed Nakamura on social media, and she also tweeted a birthday wish to the Sony Santa Monica employee, along with a comment, see you again next month. So yeah, uh, maybe this is a sign that she's going to be joining Sony, and maybe Ghostwire Tokyo is going to follow with her and be a Sony exclusive in the end. Who knows? Uh, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, some interesting news, though, for people who are wondering what she's going to do next. All right, No Man's Sky is in the news again with a new update called Synthesis, which is adding and refining even more features. Let's see what is in the package this time. So yeah, there's been a lot of updates for No Man's Sky, including one that added a VR mode. There was a re-release of the game once again. Lots and lots of patches to the game. And now, with this newest patch called Synthesis, it's adding even more to the game. So, the Hello Games has come out and said this is their spring cleaning update. Synthesis adds a couple of cool features to the PSVR mode, allowing virtual reality players to use the photo mode and ride atop the wacky alien light wildlife. Both of these things were available outside of VR, but now they're available inside of VR now. Aside from that, there's lots of new quality of life changes after installing the a new bit of kit. I don't know what that is. You No Man's Sky nerds should will let me know. You'll be able to refine materials when wherever you are instead of having to place the de- place the machine down first. You can carry more than one multi tool now. Ships can now be scrapped instead of just traded for materials or upgrades, and new technologies will let you manage your inventories over long distances or warp away from hectic space battles. It sounds like there's plenty more besides that on the PlayStation blog, so if you want to, go check out the PlayStation blog now and look at the patch notes. Hmm, let's look at those patch notes, because I'm not going to leave you guys hanging now, am I? I wouldn't do that to my fans. (coughs) There's a new terrain editing system. The terrain manipulator has been improved and optimized with new visual effects and news restore and flatten modes. You can now save custom outfits. So save a range of custom outfits in the customizer, allowing for quick changes between a range of appearances. First person exocraft. Players of all versions of the games now have access to the first person exocraft. Um, space map a new starship space map has been overhauled improving the quality and clarity of the visuals there's been new quality of life improvements including access to many features that have been that have been streamlined like UI improvements inventory management a UA quality of life improvement has been made and there's also new technologies and new base parts that you can find scattered across the world as well there's also news discovery page editions bug fixes and polishings, and base building improvements as well. And you can also now have more storage in storage containers that you can build as well. So there you go. Um, yeah, lots of cool stuff in the game now. Um, just make It's very tempting to go back to it. I, I feel the pool. Right now I just have too much to play, and I need to finish before the year's up. Um, I'm definitely going to get back to the game, though. I'm not a huge fan of this kind of like open-world crafting kind of thing, but... They, it's definitely tempting with a sci-fi element and stuff like that. Maybe I'll give it another chance, guys. Maybe I will. Tune in to find out. All right, the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition has been delayed to some time in 2020. If you don't know what the Stanley Parable is, it's a pretty interesting game that was released on Steam not too long ago, and the developer called Crows 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 has teased... An Ultra Deluxe Edition, which is going to come onto the PS4 and I believe other consoles as well. It was originally due out later this year, uh, but now that the end of December is coming up, Crows 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 has come out and said, uh, yeah, it's going to be about in 2020 sometime. They're quoted as saying, when the Stanley Parable came out, a lot of people asked us for more endings and more content. We told them it didn't need more content, that it was fine just the way it was, that it was, it already was perfect. Uh, oh, That it already had the perfect number of endings. What a sorry sack of lies that was. But seriously though, this time it's done. There will be no more. So yeah, this Ultra Deluxe Edition adds more endings and stuff like that. I didn't know that. Which is cool. I played through the Stanley Parable a few times. It's an interesting experience. um, And it definitely can have some funny moments. 
So yeah, they, they said that they are adding more things than they thought they were going to add, and plus they don't want to do more with this game after this deluxe edition comes out. They're probably going to want to move on to a different project or a new project. Uh, if you want to check out the original Stanley Parable on Steam, and if you want to wait for it, wait for the PS4 version and Xbox and Switch version that'll be out in 2020. Uh, so there's going to be first-person smoke-capped sex scenes in Cyberpunk 2077. This is not for kids, guys. So the, um, according to a Reddit user named Shavod, uh, he says that Cyberpunk 2077 is going to have first-person mocap sex scenes. It's not something new for the studio, CD Projekt Red, because The Witcher 3 also had sex scenes that at some point had to be acted out by people in motion capture suits. So Cyberpunk 2077 is going to go for a bit of a different perspective because it's the first-person camera only. So CG Project Red came out and said that the steamy scenarios will unravel from your character's perspective so you don't break immersion. So there you go. You can probably get a full face of full frontal nudity on your screen when you're going for the sexual things. Um, yeah, so <laughs> if you're excited for that, yep, it's coming. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kojima Productions veteran Ken Imazumi has left the company after 20 years. Uh, if you're looking at the picture, he is the guy all the way on the left with the baseball cap backwards and the peace sign up. So he was one of Hideo Kojima's primary accomplices. Uh, and he departed Kojima Productions after 20 years of working with Kojima, the veteran who worked alongside the Metal Gear uh, projects and Death Stranding, has left the studio after, uh, well, it's been speculated after he has had a discrepancy with another employee or director. He also maybe just wants a new change of scenery, but that hasn't come out yet. VGC has claimed that it doesn't know exactly what has happened, but a source claims to say that there was a disagreement with the studio's other directors. Um, so yeah, we'll see uh, how this affects future game development. Obviously, he's been a cornerstone of the Kojima franchises, and we'll see what happens next for Ken. Okay, so Bandakai Namco has given away a man of Medan owners a free Friends Pass to celebrate Black Friday. If you bought the game before Black Friday... I'm so sorry. <laughs> this game was so bad. I know a lot of people liked it, but I just hated this game. But if you bought The Man of Medan and you still have it, you can actually now play with friends pretty much for free. You get one free pass. So uh, don't play alone, says a press release. Free friends pass. One free friends pass for all owners and buyers of Man of Medan. Step one, tell your friends to download the free trial version of Man of Medan. Step two, make sure you have the latest version of Man of Medan then invite that friend to play the shared story mode and use the new friend's pass. Step three, follow the instructions on the game screen and enjoy the game. Uh, so yeah, if you have Man of Medan before the 6th of January 2020, you're going to earn the free friend's pass, which lets you do a full run of the, ga of the game with the shared story multiplayer mode with one of your pals. So there you go. In addition, the Curator's Cut DLC has been made available for free to all players, the extra content gives you fresh perspectives of the game's events, as well as new consequences. So there you go. Uh, it gives you a little bit of incentive to buy the game if you want to. Definitely get it on a sale, guys. Take it from me. Get it on a sale. Or watch some gameplay. Maybe you've listened to a review. Uh, definitely form your own opinions, but uh, be cautious about this one. Okay, Apex Legends progression system has been overhauled, overhauled, which increases the level cap and new pack rewards. Apex Legends still has a pretty good player base, I suppose. It's a battle royale game that was free. It released earlier this year. It's gotten some nods for not game of the year, but best multiplayer experience of the year. And Respawn Entertainment is not done with the game because they're turning on a new seasonal update. December 3rd, which was today... The developer has planned on completely overhauling its player progression system, bringing with it an increased level cap and more Apex packs to open. The PlayStation 4 update increases the level cap from 100 to 500, with the XP requirements for the initial triple figure lessened by 5%. This also means that players can earn even more Apex packs. You'll be now be rewarded with one every two levels between ranks 20 and 300, 
while the climb from 305 to 500 results in a pack every 5 levels. Every level up will continue to reward 600 leg legend tokens, and the rewards in question will be retroactively rewarded depending on the level you are before the update is applied. Players will also receive gun charms and new emblems corresponding to the level milestones that they reach, which is a pretty cool update for this game. I commend them for that. That's pretty cool. Uh, especially because they upped the level cap. A lot of people probably were maxed out at level 100 already, probably before the game reached a month in, you know, a, a month of lifespan. Uh, so this is cool for, to get people back into the game. Get back in the game! Uh, and if you want to, you can check out Apex Legends. It's free everywhere. It's got a Titanfall feel to it, so if you like Titanfall 2, you may like Apex Legends. Now, if you don't like Battle Royales, you probably won't like Battle uh, Apex Legends. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, pass on that. Also, a reminder to everyone for the Christmas and the holidays, if you see Apex Legends on the shelf and it says download code only, do not purchase the game for whatever amount of money it's saying to purchase it for. It's just a skin pack. The game is free, okay? Don't buy the physical version of the game, just like with Fortnite, just like with, with any other free game, like Tetris 99. Don't buy the physical edition. It It's not worth it. Just have your child or whoever you're going to get the game for per download it for free and give them like apex points, you know, <laughs> like, come on. So just a warning to you, you're all our people. Okay, so if you want more Super Monkey Ball remakes, HD editions, if you want to say, Sega might remake them if you buy Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. So Super Monkey Ball Blitz HD came out on the 29th of October. And it arrived on the Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox. During a recent interview with Crunchyroll, the anime giant, the Sega producer and director of the game, Masaho Shirosaki, said he was aware of the demand for the first two games in the series. And is quoted as saying, And of course, I am aware that the most favorited game, the titles, are the first two games. If there is enough support for Banana Blitz HD, this will open up doors for remaking the first two games or even a whole new title to the series. But for now, I'd be happy if everyone has fun playing Banana Blitz HD. So, there you have it. If you want Super Monkey Ball 1 or 2, go out and buy Banana Blitz right now. Because if you don't, they're probably not going to make or remake any more games. Which is, uh, I mean, it makes sense, you know, business-wise. But also, um, I don't know how the sales have been for the game, but it, it's obviously been okay. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this. I'm a little bit put off by the fact that he's saying something like this. I mean, I know a lot of companies say something like this, but this seems kind of like, I know, I know y'all love 1 and 2 more than Banana Blitz, but go buy Banana Blitz because if you don't, we're never making a monkey ball game again. Fuck you all. Fuck you, John. Who's John? I don't know. There's a guy named John somewhere listening to this. Fuck you. Not really, though. Don't, don't, don't dislike the video or turn away. I apologize to all the Johns out there. Okay, Civilization VI, the latest update to the Switch edition, has uh, broken the game. <laughs> there are workarounds in the, in the works, um, but uh, for right now, players are getting game crashes when they go to win a game. <laughs> so, the Switch version of C Civilization, they spelt that wrong, <laughs> VI, <laughs> spelled it with an S instead of a Z, is... Um, it's not the best way to experience Civilization VI. It's a poor port of the game, to be honest with you guys. The issue appears to be occurring almost 100% of the time when people go to beat the game. Or beat a, a, a scenario. So, uh, users have gone on to Reddit like the user throwaway489er. Oh, throwaway489er? I don't know. Uh, anyways, <laughs> and he got an official response from the dev team. They are aware of the issue and they're working on solutions. So here's what the dev team said in response to Throwaway 8489er. A discovered known workaround is to declare war on the civilization that is causing the crash right before you end your turn. This seems to alleviate the crashing in most instances. In order for you to know which civilization is causing the crash, you'll have to pay attention to which civ's turn it falls on onto immediately before the crash happens. Once discovered, reload a save, declare war on that civilization, and hit next turn. I hope this workaround helped out. If you have any further questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to let us know. Yeah, let us know if you uh, don't if you don't want to win the game by just being a peaceful person. You have to win the game by declaring war on someone. Don't give me those sexy eyes, Cleopatra. They ain't gonna work on me. 
Civilization 6 on the Switch mm, hasn't seen too good of reviews. It also seems to be broken, <laughs> but they're working on a fix, which is good. So if you have Civilization 6, hold on onto your progress for this update to come out so that you don't get this glitch. If you don't own Civilization 6, then move along, move along. Okay, Codemasters acquired Project Cars developer Slightly Mad Studios. Uh, during the Wii U generation, the London-based developer Slightly Mad Studios was working on a game called Project Cars, which was meant to be a definitive racing simulator for Nintendo systems, but it got cancelled in 2015. The final release, which was on other platforms, was well-received, and a sequel followed in 2017 called Grid. Uh, Grid Autosport. Fast forward to earlier this week, and Slightly Mad has now been acquired by the British developer and publisher Codemasters for about 30 million doll hairs. According to GameIndustry.biz, the studio currently has three projects in development, a mobile version of Project Cars, a Hollywood blockbuster movie, and a movie game, and one game based on its own intellectual properties. If you don't know, both of these companies are rich with creating AAA racing games, so it seems like a perfect match for Codemasters to be acquired or for Codemasters to acquire uh, Slightly Mad Studios. So yeah, um, we'll see where this goes, where, where this takes the developer in the future. Uh, I haven't played Project Cars or Grid Autosport, so I'm not sure how good they are, but I've heard good things about them. If you want to, you can check out more. Uh, uh, and if you want to, I think you can still get Project Cars and Grid. So uh, yeah, you can check those out. Okay, Mario Kart Tour is going to London for the holidays. For the holidays. So the next destination for Mario Kart Tour has been revealed. And the Mushroom Kingdom racers are going to rainy London. That's right. They, <laughs> they're going to London. Uh, the new tour, just like Pokemon, the new tour is going to feature a brand new London-themed track, two new drivers for the game Spotlight Pipe, and there's going to be a... Uh, edition of new carts and gliders. It's going to kick off around 10 p.m. Pacific time on the 3rd of December, which is today. Who are the new characters? Well, they've their silhouettes have been revealed. One is obviously Waluigi. The other one, not so sure. Maybe Daisy? Is Daisy a part of the game yet? I don't know. There's It's someone with long hair. Maybe it's Rosalina. You think it's Rosalina? I don't know. Um, so yeah, it's also been confirmed that the Mario Santa version is going to be available until the 31st of December. You're going to have to be super lucky, though, to find him in the pipes. What is the pipes? What the fuck is the pipe? Is that, like, the loot boxes in this game? I don't know. I don't, I've never played Mario Kart Tour. Let me know. Uh, but, yeah, that's a cool addition for people who like Mario Kart Tour. And remember, you can actually get, you can actually look at this update now. It's available now. Okay, so Must Dash Amigos is a new racer made by a two-man team. And it's coming to the Switch later this week, on the 5th of December. Must Dash Amigos, which is being made by Mini Beast Games, is being described as a pinata-packed, burrito-blasting, foot-racing frenzy. The game's development was inspired by titles such as Mario Kart, Speedrunners, and Micro Maniacs, with elements from those being mixed in a generous dollop of humor and Mexican flavor. Here's the official eShop description. Experience a loco top-down battle racer filled with piñatas, stampedes, avocados, and mayhem for up to four players. Mustache Amigos is a humorous, family-friendly fun fest with controls so simple that anyone can play. Leave rivals eating your dust as you blaze past them in race mode. Dish out a dish out the damage in battle mode to prove your might, and compete in tournaments to truly uncover the worthiest opponents. To survive in this world, you cannot just run. You must dash, amigos. So the game is going to launch on the Switch on December 5th, like I said, and it's going to be priced for about, uh, what, about 20, 20 slaps in the face. So also, if you buy it before the 25th, you'll be able to download it for just about, uh, I'd say about $7. That's a pretty good deal. Um, so yeah, uh, check this game out if you want. The trailer is actually pretty funny. It looks like a combination between that, um, oh, what is that game? It's like that game with all the clay guys, and it's kind of hard to move around. I forget what it's called, though. It's kind of like a combination of that along with, like, speedrunners and stuff like that. So check it out if you want to. Mustache Amigos. All right, so a game that started as a Fire Emblem ROM hack is coming to Kickstarter. So a game inspired by Fire Emblem has taken the Kickstarter, and it has a Switch release on the table should it secure enough funding. 
Path of the Midnight Sun is the title which combines visual novel elements with turn-based strategy and boasts lavish live 2D animation segments. It actually began life as a ROM hack called Fire Emblem Midnight Sun, but the developer, Studio Damien, decided to totally abandon the connection to Intelligent Systems series and instead use the project as a basis for an entirely new IP. The game has been built from the ground up and is looking pretty special. And we're sure you'll agree. Thanks, Nintendo Life. The Italian-based team is looking for a goal of £27,250 to supply at least 20 hours of gameplay content. They also said that there are no plans to lock relevant story or gameplay elements behind stretch goals or DLCs. And the campaign has raised almost about £14,900 already. So should the project reach a goal of £43,000, the game will include, a f- include full voice acting. Uh, none of the other stretch goals have been announced yet, but presumably one of them will include a Switch version. The team has said that if we meet the required stretch goal and or if the game has enough success post-release, we will release it on the Nintendo Switch as well. So right now it seems like it's not released on the Nintendo Switch, but it could come there in the future. If you want to, you can support the Kickstarter by going to uh, www.kickstarter.com slash project slash studio Damien slash Path of the Midnight Sun, a dark fantasy JRPG VN with dashes in between each word slash. <laughs> or you can just search Path of the Midnight Sun on Kickstarter to make it easier for you. Uh, right now, uh, there at the time of me talking about this, there's $33,000 raised, and there's 466 fa- packers backers with about 17 days left to go. All right, so Lo- Rocket League's fifth Rocket Pass is unlocking a special anime-inspired supercar. Oh, Tim Rules just perked up. Sonics has announced Rocket Pass 5 will become available in Rocket League on the 4th of December, which is the same day as the Blueprint update, which will be rolling out, which removes all the loot boxes. The 5th pass includes brand new weekly challenges, free and premium, and you can collect, you can complete challenges from previous weeks to get the pro tiers faster. Rocket Pass 5 includes 70 tiers of new items, including hollow sphere wheels, metal graph animated decals, and new three new goal expa- explosions. If you're up, if you upgrade the Rocket Pass Premium, you'll unlock the anime-inspired supercar known as the Chikara. At tier 70, you'll gain access to the Chikara GTX. And if you go beyond this, the Pro tiers will unlock painted and special edition versions of select Rocket Pass 5 items. Sonics also in, issued a reminder about how credits are replacing keys on the fifth on the fourth of December. Upgrade to Rocket Pass Premium for a thousand credits. Or get a head start on your journey with a premium bundle and a tier and a 12 tier boost for 2,000 credits. Since credits are replacing keys on December 4th, credits have been added to Rocket Pass. You can now earn up to 1,000 credits in Rocket Pass Premium. What do you guys think? The new car looks pretty swiggity swag, and if you want to, you can start earning your way to it or buy it uh, today, the day that this is releasing, the 4th of December. Alright, real quick, Doug Bowser's favorite video game has been revealed! <laughs> Doug Bowser, during a, a interview with University of Utah's magazine, has, co- has come out and told them what his favorite game ever is. So, here you go. He's quoted as saying, My favorite game of all time is Mist, with a Y instead of an I. It's a deep, immersive, problem-solving game with a very little dialogue. The graphics just amazed me. I finished the first three editions. My favorite game now, though, is Super Mario Odyssey for the Nintendo Switch. Purchase now for $60 at your local retailer or through Nintendo... No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But he did say for Nintendo Switch. I'm very close to completing it and collecting all the moons. So there you go. His favorite game ever is Myst, and his new favorite game for the current generation is Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, He never got to the end of it, though, because he doesn't like beating up Bowser, which would be himself. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, uh, Mist was a 90s, 1993 th- real-time 3D game, and it was a landmark for its time. Uh, it ultimately sold millions of copies and was hailed as a landmark release back in the 90s. Okay, so yeah, you can actually check out the making of Mist, uh, which is a feature on Nintendo Life if you want to. Uh, it's it's a pretty interesting looking game. I think I've seen this game before. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely one of those old, like, point-and-click adventure games, but it looks pretty cool, so, if you want to, check out Mist. 
Whew, okay, so Bethesda has delayed the Switch version of the Elder Scrolls Blades until early next year. Uh, they're quoted as saying, We know how eager our players are to dive in the Blades on the Nintendo Switch, and we've been hard at work to make it happen. Unfortunately, amidst all other changes we're making to Blades, we've had to delay it, our Switch release until early 2020. They also said, We can't wait until you begin your quest in Blades on the Switch, and we're confident this additional time will let us deliver the polished gameplay our fans deserve. We deeply appreciate your patience. As we've mentioned in previous Town Hall, PvP matches will be cross-platform between mobile versions and Switch versions when it releases. In addition to cross-platform play, Blades on the Switch includes a motion controls and cross-progression support. Meaning you can, you can continue your session on Switch or mobile, the game will also be free to play. So it looks like they're just going to take a little bit more time to develop the game, which probably is for the better, seeing as Fallout 76 needed about a year's worth to, of development to make the game a, a more complete experience. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how this is once Blades launches next year on the Switch. Alright, if you didn't know, Halo Reach is now available with the Halo Master Chief Collection. If you purchase the Halo Master Chief Collection, you can purchase... You'll get uh, Halo Reach along with it, or I believe you can purchase stand it standalone for about 10 buckaroonies. I personally got the collection. I purchased the collection today. It downloaded. It's ready to go. I'm pretty satisfied. So the game is coming with Halo Reach, Halo 3, Halo 1, Anniversary Edition, Halo 2, Halo, OD Halo 3 ODST, and I believe Halo 4? I believe? Question mark? Uh, the team is launching Halo Reach today, and they're working on the framework to kick off Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary early next year in 2020. And they want to thank the Xbox and Halo communities for going on this journey with them and partnering with us to make us a reality. Uh, they're also excited to deliver Noble Team's adventure to the Xbox and One and PC players. And it's also available to download pretty much for free with the Xbox Game Pass, which is about, what, $3 right now. So that's a pretty good steal. Oh, here's all the games it's going to come with. Uh, Halo Reach, Halo Ma um, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo 3, Halo 3 LDSD, and Halo 4 are going to be included with the game Xbox Game Pass and the, collect the Halo, Halo Master Chief Collection on the Steam. So there you go. Uh, if you want to, you can download it today, or if you want to wait for the, all, the whole collection to be released, there you go. And finally today, we got some Rock Band news. Uh-oh! Rock band, the beat goes on and on and on and on, and it gets weaker and weaker as the years go on. Uh, so Rock Band celebrated its fourth birthday in October, and this month they're giving out some free DLC along with some DLC packs. Not for free, though. Rock Band Hits Packs 1, 2, and 3 are available now, and they have some of the most popular songs from the game's catalog, like Carry On My Wayward Son, blah, 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 blah. They are about, what, $40 each? They're one-click buy options to get a bunch of new songs in your library, so it might be a good deal for people, but not all the songs in the game are actually that, or it, all the songs in those packs are actually good. Uh, there's a lot of songs that uh, I would not purchase myself. There's also a good amount of songs in these packs that are from Rock Band 2, Rock Band 1, Rock Band 3, which all those games are, uh, if you bought them previously, are all available to be downloaded for free. You can actually download the entire Rock Band 3 track list uh, for like 20 bucks, which is what I did. Um, so yeah, if you want to, you can check those out if you want to. I, I don't really care anymore. Rock Band 4 is a piece of shit. I mean, the, the controllers are awful. The online connection is awful. You, you, you drop notes constantly in the game. And not to mention, um, to get the full experience for the game, you had to download or purchase the Rivals Bundle, which was an extra $20. Thanks a lot, Rock Band. Harmonix, you're amazing. Why haven't I bought Autica yet, or whatever it's called? Because of this. <laughs> because Rock Band 4 was such a shit show. We'll see if plastic instruments come to the next generation of consoles. I personally don't think they will. But, hey, there's always hope for a better tomorrow. And hopefully they get a better person or company to make their controllers for the next generation. Because, goddamn, if Rock Band 4's controllers aren't terrible shit. Rock Band Live, or uh, Guitar Hero Live, those controllers are fine. They still work to this day. They're not the best, but they're, they're good. Rock Band 4, though, Jesus Christ, give me something better than Mad Cats. PDX, or whatever they're called? Nope, not, no better. <laughs> no better. They actually seem to be breaking faster. My strum bar doesn't work all the time. <laughs> I've, I've gone through about five controllers now, and people might go, uh, Yummy, you're just playing with the instruments too hard. 
I'm playing with them with about the same amount of thrust as I usually do. You know, it's, it's just it's it's just the material that they they make these things with is so shitty, it's so shoddy. But I digress, guys. That was this episode of Yummy Cast, a video game podcast. This was actually episode uh, 84. I said that last time, but I was wrong. Uh, so here you go. This is I, maybe this isn't. I don't actually. I don't know. Is this 84? I think it's 84. I'm going. I'm going crazy. I don't know anymore. Anyways, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Yummy Cast. I appreciate you no matter where you're listening on, uh, whether it's YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, or Apple Podcasts. Just a reminder, we're going to be switching platforms within the year. Uh, so if you want to uh, refollow the podcast once I do that, I'll, I'll of course, put a, a special update video out or uh, update podcast uh, out so you know when exactly it's going to happen, when I'll be taking the episodes down and re-uploading them to a different site that is free to use. Um, and, yeah, there you go. All that and, and more coming soon. Uh, remember, the 15th of December is the Game of the Year uh, Top 10 list, if you want to check that out. And if you want to put in your Game of the Year nom, uh, prediction, my Game of the Year prediction in my Discord, make sure you do that before the probably before the 13th of December. We're going to do the cutoff on the 13th. Remember, if you, if you predict the same game as someone else and it was right, you still get stickers. Uh, so far, there's been a good amount of, of people putting in votes, and like I said during the update video or the uh, uh, the announcement podcast, not a lot, of, you know, a lot of AAA games on that list, but no indie games. Is that a hint, Yummy? I don't know. Is it? You have to find out. December fifteenth. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. I am Yummy the Ferret, and this has been Yummy Cast, a video game podcast. <laughs>